Welcome to the colored pencil demonstration for the Parkland Art League. I'm so glad you could join me. My name is Jeffrey Green. I'd like to thank Debbie Haas for inviting me to do this demo. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, it's actually the first video demo I've ever done. I've done quite a few of them. They've all been done in public, but I am looking forward to it. Again, thank you so much for joining me. It certainly is an interesting time we live in right now, isn't it? But I'm going to share a few things about what I do and what exactly colored pencils are. And uh, I'm also going to be doing a demonstration for you using a yellow rose. I'll be doing that directly over the table so you can see all the details. I've been a colored pencil artist for well over 20 years. In fact, I've been drawing since I was a kid. It's kind of been always what I do. I guess I got serious about art about, uh, I'm not even sure when. It might have been in my late 20s or something like that. I, I've always done art, but in terms of sharing it with, with the public, it was around that time. But in all honesty, I, I was very troubled uh, for quite a long time in my life. I've struggled with uh, very deep anxiety issues and obsessive compulsive disorder. So in all practicality, I really did not function in public at all. I was very isolated. But the one thing that I did do was artwork. That's where I honed what I do. It's where I learned. I learned by doing and I learned by just years and years of practice and drawing. So I had that outlet and it certainly gave me a sense of uh, accomplishment and the isolation, although it was a very difficult time and a ver very troubling time that, that caused a quite a, a, a lot of problems. It was the time where I really, uh, my uh, art talent came into full bloom as I discovered how to use it, how to grow and learn how to draw, and in particular, colored pencils. As I said, I've been using them for quite a long time. In the beginning, when I was very young, I was kind of a jack-of-all-trades with art. I've done pretty much any medium there is except watercolors, which is ironic because there are similar similarities excuse me, between colored pencils and watercolors. So, uh, what exactly are colored pencils? Just, just a simple pencil, and yet you can do so much with them. You can take a drawing and, and make it a painting. That's what I'll be focusing on today. That's the artwork that I do. You don't have to do it that way. There are all kinds of different styles of colored pencils, just like they are with any medium. But colored pencils are basically pigment and wax, and th that's the key point there. You see, the wax is kind of translucent when you draw it on the paper. So what you do with colored pencils is basically layering and burnishing. Burnishing is kind of a technical term. We'll get to that when I actually show you the demo up close. But the layering is so important. What we do is, instead of, say, you would have a medium like paint, and on a canvas you would apply the color on the canvas, it's going to come out opaque and it's going to be very instant. You're going to have an impact right away, although a lot of artists certainly layer with paint. But it's the, uh, the pigment is opaque. With colored pencils, what we're going to do, and what I'm going to show you, is build our subject. We kind of pull back and we start from very simple hues and light tones. We build up layering and shading. We build the subject up and we capture, capture the subject by building. Now, before we get to the actual demonstration, I'm going to give you a walk around through my art studio. Incidentally, uh, my wife and I just moved to Bath, PA, and on August 29th we moved. So I have a brand new studio. It's a lot more spacious. I can get a lot more done. I'm just going to walk around and show you what it's like here, show you where I create, and uh, 
in the course of doing that, I have a few colored pencil finish pieces here that I'm going to show for you. As I do, I want, to, want you to keep one thing uh, in mind in particular. These are all finished pieces, and I want you to remember that when we go to do the uh, color pencil demonstration, because what I'll be doing for you uh, is I'll be doing it from scratch. I'm going to show you the very, very beginning of a colored pencil piece and what that entails. So it's going to be quite a comparison from that to a full finished art piece. So why don't we do that? We'll take a look around here. Here we have a wide view of the studio where I work. As we enter the left here, we see some storage room, which is vital, of course. A bookcase over to the left, and plants are pretty much around wherever I uh, happen to be. I love having plants around. In the corner here is another bookcase, and I do have some of my works out displayed here. This one is called Succulents in Sunshine. Over here on my easel, which is actually a painter's easel, I do oil painting as well as a kind of supplement to my colored pencils. Uh, this picture is a portrait of my mother. It's called Carol Prayer Series 1. She is posing in her backyard in the garden area. She loved garden. Uh, she loved gardening. So I thought it would be quite appropriate to uh, have her sit out there. The, uh, the highlights on the face were achieved with a combination of scraping away the uh, color pencil with a razor blade and leaving some of the places blank. And you can see there's a fair amount of detail in the hat uh, there may be a lot of detail, but it was hard to do. <laughs> My latest colored pencil piece, the last one that I completed, is this. It's called Beauty in Orange. I enjoy doing roses a great deal. Okay. There's my uh, painting supplies back there with my easel in the corner of the studio. And uh, you can't see it because the light is kind of altering the video, but there's a lovely, lovely scene out there of cornfields and uh, the wonderful autumn trees. There we go. That's much better. That's right outside my studio window. It's really quite beautiful. And there's, of course, some more plants here. And this work down here, this is called Vigilance. It has no uh, meaning, it's just a, a wildlife picture that I, that I did in colored pencils. Panning over to the right here is the area that I create the colored pencils in. And this is where I'll be doing the, uh, the demo. Let's see, I'll pan out here. Of course, got some more plants. Next to me here is my, uh, my pencil sharpener down there and some things that I use while I draw. Right next to my desk on the right here. It's not very, uh, it's kind of a, a different way to do it, but I have a cart with a tray on top of it and it displays all the colored pencils I'll be using. Now there's quite a few there which is because I'm actually uh, working on finishing a piece and starting uh, this one that I'll be sharing with you. So there's quite a few colored pencils in there. The piece that I'm about to finish is uh, this one. It's a shell still life with a 
a wood turning um, a wood turning bowl there that an artist in our art society does it's about 90% uh, done the area on the lower right there where the shells are that still needs to be cleat, uh, completed uh, this is really important uh, when it comes to doing the demo I'm about to show you to see the progression of how far you can really push colored pencils again as I said in the beginning we'll be starting from scratch at the very beginning with white paper I'll pan out here let's put my chair back there okay pan around here got my desk over there and uh, there's our door so I have quite a wonderful a uh, large enough space here to create. It's a, it's a wonderful atmosphere here. So that's my new studio. That's where I create now. It's quite peaceful and so conducive to creativity where we live now. We both, my wife and I, really enjoy it. We're about to get to the colored pencil demonstration portion. If you have any questions about colored pencils, about the process or, or how to do certain aspects of it, feel free to email me if I don't answer it certainly directly in the demonstration. One of the questions you might have is, how in the world did someone so troubled and isolated uh, become a public artist, which is what I do now? That's kind of a good question. It, it was a long process. It, it took a long time. The period that I described was most of my life, actually. I've only been functioning in public, I'd say, about uh, maybe seven years at the most now. Uh, it didn't happen overnight. It happened gradually with shows and, uh, and, you know, becoming part of the art community with the Forks Area Art Society in our area. It was a, it was a long process and certainly I needed a lot of healing, which took a great deal of time. So, why don't we get right to it? Here we have a colored pencil drawing in the very, very beginning stages of the drawing. In fact, it's barely even started. I have only one layer of colored pencil on the rose, just to have our eyes uh, focus on something before I actually begin. This is my reference here. It's a yellow rose. I take all my photos and arrangements myself and uh, what I do is I work in my studio. I will draw the rose onto drawing paper and then transfer that drawing to artboard. That's what this is. This is Canton Sea Grain Artboard. I've used a number of different service, uh, surfaces over the years. I began with watercolor paper, then I kind of moved to illustration board, and I kind of ranged around there with different boards, but I settled with sea grain. I just really like the uh, the mild graininess to the, the art board. Um, some of the uh, illustration boards have some texture too, and some of them are very smooth. Uh, most of that will depend on what kind of style you like, what you like to do in your drawing, and the appearance of your picture that you would like to achieve. Uh, the only thing I would say about uh, smooth surfaces, if you want to get a really smooth illustration board, is that it very uh, mildly cuts down on the time that it takes to do the colored pencil piece. Now. A piece this size, it's 16 by 20, I left two inches on each side here to work. So I, I like to kind of practice and see what colors are, are out there. A piece this size used to take me about 100 and hours to 120 hours to finish. I, I think I'm actually faster than that now. As I said, I transferred the picture onto this board. Uh, what that does for me is that uh, 
Hopefully, when I draw the rows on drawing paper, I get all the mistakes out, I work out all the kinks, and I, I get it the way I really want it so that I, when I transfer it to the art board, it's already prepared for the colored pencils. Hopefully all the mistakes are done, I have it centered and, and done in the, in the correct way because colored pencils is made out of wax. It's not impossible to erase, but it's, it's hard to. Uh, that's no problem for small uh, errors or problems, but when it comes to something uh, major, then you're going to have a more of a, a difficulty. Color pencils is all about layering, and that's what we're going to be doing. You can see the stark contrast between this and the finished work. Now, as I, I showed you on the uh, reference here, there's quite a bit of color here. There's a dark background. We got the yellow of the rose and the wood tone of the table. That is all going to be achieved in the same painterly style that uh, I showed my original pieces with. So the background will become dark and I'll do the wood grain, the rose, of course, and all the shading. Uh, we're going to gradually build those up. As I said earlier, Colored pencils is all about building the subject with, for instance, if I was oil painting, I would be applying very uh, opaque yellows and greens onto the canvas and it would really come out pretty instantly, even if I might layer some more oil painting in there, it would come out very immediate. But as you can see, this is very, very light and we build those light layers up with more layers of colored pencil on top of, top of them, different hues, different shades. We build them all on top of each other and we gradually build and pull out all the colors and the shading. So it's kind of a building process. Layering is the heart of colored pencils. Usually what my eye does is I look for the lightest color in the subject and I lay that down first. The, uh, the green of the leaf is a very dark green with dark shading up there. But I kind of went beyond that and looked at the lightest color in the mix of green. And I applied that color there to the, the leaf and the area here. And I did the same thing with the yellow. You can see there's all kinds of different colors in here. There's, there's oranges, there's browns, there's grays. Uh, there's gold, there's all kinds of different colors there, but the first thing that my eye picks up is the lightest color because what we're doing is building the colors. We'll get to the deepest part of the colors as we layer. So why don't we do some of that now? I'm going to put down a light layer of uh, burnt ochre here. I'm using Prismacolor colored pencils. Uh, ever since I started colored pencils, I've been using Prismacolor. There are a lot of different companies out there now, a lot of different uh, pencils. There's all kinds of different pencils now. There's uh, watercolor pencils, and there's something that has uh, ink in it now. That's a they call it a colored pencil, but it has ink in it. But I. And basically have always just stuck to the conventional wax colored pencil. I, I've kept uh, working with Prismacolor because I really enjoy them. It's very important to me to be frugal with my art and with supplies and though it does cost some money certainly Prismacolor is not going to cost as much as uh, some of the uh, higher priced colored pencils. I'm layering in the, uh, the uh, actually I might have said, I don't remember what I said, but it's burnt ochre. Yes. Just layering that in here. I'm doing it very lightly as you can see. It's very important when you're doing the layering of colored pencils not to lay down a very heavy layer of colored pencils immediately. If I were to do that, then I would get so much wax on the paper that I really wouldn't be able to do much mixing of colors. 
or much shading or anything like that. Let's see. I could, for instance, if I, I do it over here, if I put down a very heavy layer and covered the green of the paper here, when I go back and I, I want to layer that, I'm not going to be really able to do much and I won't be able to add much nuance to it because there's just too much wax on the paper. That is something we want to build to. I'm going to gradually build toward that. The, uh, the sound of the dentist drill you just heard is my pencil sharpener. It sounds, always reminds me of a, a dentist drill. Okay. What I do is uh, I buy my colored pencils online. It's cheaper that way. I usually use Dick Blick Art. They are very reasonably priced and it doesn't take too long to arrive. A uh, Prismacolor colored pencil, if you go into an art store or a uh, arts and craft store like Hobby Lobby or Michaels or something like that. One one single colored pencil will cost you oh boy at least two dollars and uh, and forty cents but I can get it on Dick Blick for 99 cents each and sometimes uh, 89 cents if I order more than 10 of them so that uh, it works out a lot better for that because well actually what I do is I order uh, I have a selection that I've chosen today in the beginning of the video I showed the layout of my colored pencils which has a, a ton of colors in them and I I probably will be dipping into that for this picture on the video but initially I've chosen some simple colors to start with because that's what my eye is really looking at. I'm not looking at the massive detail in the rows right now. I work from light to dark with the hues. I work from light to dark with the shading, building, and uh, in terms of detail I work from some detail to a lot of detail gradually. And I picked a simple selection of colors to start out with here. It just helps focus the mind more. As I draw here, and I block in this color, I am constantly bouncing my eyes back and forth between the surface of my drawing and my subject. My subject is to the left of me off camera so that you can get a close-up view of the drawing. Uh, it's very important to do that. You want to spend at least half of your time looking at your subject while you're drawing. If I were to keep drawing here and I didn't hardly look at my subject, whether it be a photo reference or a still life that I've set up in the studio or, you know, wherever I might happen to be, whatever I'm drawing, if I don't bounce my eyes back and forth between the subject and the drawing, what I'll start to do is I'll start drawing a little less unrealistically. It'll come out distorted and I'll begin to draw instead of what my eyes see I'll be drawing uh, my own idea of a yellow rose which you know I might have in my head kind of maybe a cliche of a yellow rose which is not wrong uh, plenty of people draw and they uh, draw what they imagine or they make a picture up they don't always draw what they see, but what I stress with drawing, especially when you're learning to draw, is drawing what you see is, is very important. After you learn to draw what you see, you'll have a lot more flexibility to draw things that you uh, 
that you make up in your mind. If you wanted to draw a yellow rose from imagination, you'll have a lot more information in your in your mind and in your eyes to do that after you learn to draw from life, which is vital. Drawing from life and drawing what you see is vital for light and shade. It's very important to have a model, some kind of model or some kind of subject you can do. Now, as I said, color pencils takes a lot of time. So uh, whatever I'm drawing, I usually use a photo reference. If, if I set up this rose on a table and I started drawing that, you can imagine what the rose is gonna look like a hundred hours into the picture. Uh, there's not really much that we would be able to do with that. So that certainly helps. But whatever you're doing, whether it's a photo reference, whether you have a setup in front of you or you're drawing outside, whatever you're doing, it's important to have a model or some sort of reference so that you can see light and shade. That's what gives art a dynamic look, a 3D look, and it's what makes it look realistic. The light uh, for this particular picture is mostly coming from the top right. It might be down a little bit down here, actually. The shadow is over here. The light is hitting the rose right here on the yellow. It's a very light yellow. But of course, the light is coming down in a kind of a triangular effect there. I'll, I'll show you that. There's a kind of a triangular light here with the uh, the shadows in the back. I, I really like that kind of a effect. It's kind of hard to see on the, uh, the camera here because the light is shining on the photo. I started drawing when I was very young. Uh, I'm using, I'm putting down a layer now of goldenrod. As I move along, I'll be mixing different colors together. What your eye sees here is a, a yellow rose, but no matter what subject you happen to be doing, uh, one color is never just a simple color. A yellow rose is not just yellow. There are so many different hues that make up the rose. There may be curves in the petals where there's the yellow is darker and certainly in the shaded areas there's all kinds of colors in there. I'm seeing orange in there, sienna, grays, browns. All those colors I will be mixing and building. Because I'm using an artboard I can put down a lot of layers. That's why in the finished pieces I showed they have such uh, nuance and subtlety and they have such depth like a, a painting because the uh, mixing of the colors and the labor layering really enables uh, doing that. I uh, really never set out in the beginning to draw a painting. Really, it, it's, it's the effect of the colored pencils. Not every colored pencil artist layers to that degree. Everyone uh, has a different style, just like with any other medium. But colored pencils has such a control, or as you can see, as I draw here, I have a lot of control over what I'm doing. Uh, if I were painting, which I, I also do now, oil painting, some of the control is gonna be in the brush. Some of the control is going to be in the oil paint itself. And I kind of, in a sense, lose a little control there. But with color pencil, you have tight control over most all of the uh, process of doing it. I have control over the pressure of my pencil. I have control over the layers I put down, over the hues and it really affords, certainly leads to uh, the ability to do 
quite a bit of realism. So because of that ability with colored pencils, there are a lot of colored pencil artists who work with realism. Over time, my, uh, my mind has just kind of leaned toward that. Uh, when I drew when I was very young, I actually had a very loose style, kind of like Van Gogh. I, I directed all kinds of lines across the paper and curved them every which way, but the more layering that I did over the years, that kind of disappears. What I'm doing now is I am following the contours of the petals and that is very apparent now but that will disappear as I put more layers down because there will be so many layers on there. After a while the pencil lines will almost disappear because it will become uh, almost like a painting. I'm still applying light layers here. Now we have a canary yellow. What I put down uh, for the very lightest layer right here was uh, lemon yellow. It's a very light yellow. It's barely enough to even see. It's just enough for my eyes to target something and concentrate on the area. If my hand was in the way there, I might be blocking a little bit with the the camera there. I'm sorry about that, but we're putting on a, a darker yellow now, and I'm going to put that yellow over the whole entire area of the petals here, just to pull out the yellow and add yet another layer uh, in the initial layers here. As I was saying, uh, I started drawing when I was very young. It's, it's something that I've always loved to do, and when I was very young, I, I don't know why, but I just thought, I want to be an artist. So, I kind of uh, started drawing when I was young. I really enjoyed it. I realized that uh, I, I had something there, and other people kind of reinforced that, and I kept it up. I lived a very isolated life, so when I was very young, I would just sit in my room and in order to practice drawing, I would use magazines. I would draw people and different things in magazines. I used a lot of different mediums then, but eventually I settled with colored pencils and, and over the course of the years, I got more serious with art. I got more serious with the intent of what I wanted to do with it and what I wanted to achieve and I moved on from practicing on those things to doing my own subjects which is it's very important with fine art to do one's own subjects to have one's own creations a lot of people draw uh, other people's photos or even other people's art and that's great to practice with it's a good tool to practice with but in order to produce art, it's important to uh, have original uh, pieces. Okay, let's see. Let's put down some... Uh, how about a little orange? Again, there are some... In the area that I'm drawing, the rose right here, there are a lot of shadows. But I'm not drawing the shadows in specificity yet. Really, I'm picking up the hues behind them. There's a mixture of shadows. I mean, <laughs> excuse me. There's a mixture of colors inside the shadows. And I'm capturing all those before I go too deep with the different hues of the shading. So we're mixing here some orange in here. So, so far we have uh, burnt ochre, we have the darker yellow, and the lighter yellow, some orange in here. 
I don't count how many layers that I put down with colored pencils. That's really kind of impossible. Uh, right now it's very simple and it looks like it's not really going to be that much, but this is white paper as you can see and the whole thing is going to be covered with uh, very deep colors of colored pencils. That's going to take so many layers to do that it's not even uh, going to be able to be counted. Uh, I avoid in the beginning I don't even concentrate on the grain of the paper at all. I don't seek to cover all the little white spots of the grain. That will come gradually as I build up the layers. Again, if I were to try to do that with the heavier uh, pressure, I wouldn't be able to build up a lot of layers. really what colored pencils is uh, all about. It's layering, layering, layering. Layer after layer after layer on top of each other. Different shades of color, different hues, different uh, lights and darks, uh, different tones of shading all gradually get mixed together on the paper with uh, individual colored pencils. Incidentally, uh, I do what I like to do, and you know, you may not want to do that yourself, but I avoid buying uh, multi-packs of colored pencils. I have a, a repertoire of uh, colored pencils that I use, and I keep a steady stock of them, and I also buy whatever colors I'm going to need for a particular piece if I ran out of certain colors. So I buy uh, my colored pencils online individually. That saves money because if you buy a pack of 100 colored pencils or a pack of 40 or what have you, there's going to be a few colors in there that you're never going to use for 20 years or your entire life even. It may not be a color that suits you. You know, it may not be in the colors that you like to use. That happens to me a lot. I have certain selection of colors I use, so I save money by ordering individual pencils. If, for instance, I, I'm using goldenrod right now. If I were to run out of goldenrod, I would just buy some individual colored pencil, color pencils of goldenrod to add to the stock. What I'm doing here, it really brings to mind what a great difference there is between the beginning of a colored pencil piece and a finished one. This really shows you what's behind drawing a fine art colored pencil piece. There's a lot of work that goes into it. And in the beginning, even after years and how long have I been using color pencils it's well over 20 years it probably over 25 years it's been quite a while I'm not really good at numbers or, or remembering things like that but it's been a long time and even now as I sit here whenever I begin a new colored pencil piece uh, I'm looking at this stage and I'm on what I'm doing, and I'm thinking, oh, man, oh boy, what is this? Gonna, what is this gonna look like? Because right now it really looks like crayon. It looks like light layers of crayon, which is not a bad comparison, really. A colored pencil <clears throat> is similar to a crayon. It just has has a, a high grade of pigment and a very good uh, form. Of the wax base, I believe, and I may be mistaken. Uh, in Canada, in, uh, Canada, I think they actually do call them crayons. I'm, I believe. I'm not quite sure. All right. I think what we need now is uh, a darker sienna color. So I'm going to take sienna brown, and I'm going to start pulling out some shading. The 
there's very dark shading but again we're building all the different colors and shades we're building them up rather than applying them immediately i'm applying such a light shade here it's probably hard to pick up with your eye i do as i said mostly use prismacolor sometimes i use a koinor woodless color they don't have quite the layering ability of a prismacolor uh, as i add more layers of wax they're not very effective but they're effective in the uh the very beginning to have some different shading aspects okay just gonna add a little bit of that in there Actually, what I want to do is I'm missing, I'm missing a color I would really like to pull out there. How about some of that? My uh, art desk has a, a couple of drawers underneath. That's what all, that's what all the banging is. Okay, I'm going to be adding some poppy red in here, which is kind of a, ver a vermilion color. It's a mixture of orange and red. Kind of a uh, scarlet vermilion kind of color. And I, I really want to pull out those uh, warm hues in the background of the shadows before I put in some darker shading. It really gives the uh, color some nuance. The more nuance that your colors have, the more nuance that your art piece has, the more the artwork comes alive. It, it has vibrancy in the eyes. If you've ever walked in a gallery, you'll notice differences between a lot of the artwork. Some of the artwork will really jump out as uh, vibrant to your eyes. And some of it will look kind of flat. A lot of times that is because the, uh, the flat looking not to, I, mean, I don't mean it in a negative way there's there's all kinds of different styles i don't really judge anything as being uh, good or bad just different but in terms of of how it uh, jumps out your eye uh, the nuance of color is what really brings it alive to your eyes and makes it exciting to see and an exciting picture to uh kind of impact the your view of it. If I, I did a yellow rose and I just did simple colors and I didn't have a reference for all the light and shade, the, fro the rose would come out rather flat looking. It wouldn't have a lot of excitement to the eye. Uh, so it's, it's very effective to add a lot of nuance and a lot of different colors. Uh, the plus for that for me is that I enjoy doing that. I There's a, a lot of tones in the, the colored pencils, of course. And in then this picture, there's a lot of darks. A lot of dark hues. But what really excites me, what I really love, is I like the subtlety in pictures. I like the subtle hues. The, the subtle yellows and gold in this picture. And the more that I can pull out detail in them, uh, it, I just really love doing that. It's, it's so fun to do. I'm going to add a little nuance to the, the shading on the rose here. Right now I'm using 70% French gray. I'm going to put some uh, darker shading on the rose on the edges here where I see darker tones. Again, the light is coming from this direction, so on this side of the rose, it will be darker. Pulling out some of that shading there. I'm seeing a lot of uh, brown in this petal down here, so I'm going to be layering some dark brown and again 
as I draw, I constantly bounce my head back and forth between my subject and my eyes on the paper. Very good. So many different shades and colors in the shading. It's really, it's really exciting. I just, I, I really love this. The create, there's so much nuance and creativity itself is, is so exciting and such a wonderful blessing. This area right down here on the petal, that one area has so much to it. There's browns, orange, sienna, all kinds of different colors. <clears throat> so, there we have some dark brown. I'll block in some here too. Let me uh, grab my reference here. Uh, as you can see with the rose, there are, even though it's a simple rose, it's one rose, there's an incredible amount of detail in the petals. There are so many petals. There are so many different uh, waves and contours to the petals. There's a lot of detail in there. I don't really necessarily concentrate on the extreme detail in the very beginning. Uh, with the detail, I also work from uh, less complicated to more complicated. Your mind and your eyes simply can't take, uh, or at least mo most people people can't, and my eyes certainly can't take an immense amount of detail immediately. It needs to be gradually built up, and certainly as you go along in the drawing and step away from it and come back to it again, you'll notice uh, that it needs more detail. But that's something that I have to do a lot. I spend a lot of hours drawing. I spend a lot of hours on colored pencils, so the longer that I sit here and stare at the uh, subject, I kind of start losing objectivity and I start losing a good eye for what I'm seeing. So what I do is I, I usually have two pieces going at the same time. That will either be two colored pencil works or it will be a colored pencil work and a painting. That way I can step away from what I've been staring at for so many hours and get a fresh perspective on it when I come back to it. I'm going to add some poppy red on this petal here. And in a moment I'm going to uh, add a little poppy red right here. Got a lot of nuance in there. Okay. I need uh, my. Okay, I didn't get that out in the beginning here. Ah, uh, there we go. One of my favorite colors to use is uh, I use it a lot. As I said, I have a certain selection of colors that I use very often, colors that are my favorite, colors that just really appeal to me, and uh, certainly I follow whatever the color is of the subject, but terracotta is one of my very favorite colors. seeing a lot of deep color behind the shading in the petal down here. So I'm adding terracotta to really bring out that hue. Some people certainly might not find colored pencils the, the amount of time that it takes appealing uh, but this is part of the, what really pulls me along as I draw 
colored pencils. It takes a lot of time and layering, but since I, uh, I find so much excitement in the nuances of the different shades, it really pulls me along as I concentrate on pulling each of those out and adding all the colors in it. That's really what makes it very exciting for me. It uh, may see, well, it may seem that way because it is, it's at a very simple stage. But the, uh, for me, it's exciting to add all the different colors that we have in there. That's really what drives me along as I go. Certainly detail, I enjoy doing uh, detail, as you can see by the finished work. That's not something that I ever sat down, sat down, and I never said to myself, I want to draw realistic pictures with a, a lot of detail. I never really sat down with that goal in mind. It just kind of came naturally. Uh, over time, I just kind of uh, developed that style, and certainly, as I said, colored pencils is certainly conducive to realism. It's, it's quite ideal for that. I'm finding I want to add some more vibrancy in here with the colors. Kind of add a little more vibrancy to the earth tones of the, the shadows. I'll mix it in there. Alrighty. Okay. Get my, uh, what I'm about to do now is I'm I'm going to share with you another aspect of colored pencils, which is really the heart of painterly colored pencil. What I have here is a. Uh, I have a white colored pencil. The white colored pencil, when doing a colored pencil piece on a white surface, this pencil does not serve as a color. What it really does is it acts kind of like a paintbrush. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this white colored pencil and I'm going to go all over all the layers that I did here with the colors. It's called uh, burnishing. What that does is it pushes the colors into the paper. It pulls out a richness to the tone and it gives a lot of, uh, it gives the, the painterly style to the layers. And uh, the white pencil, really, it, 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 it's basically the uh, paintbrush of the colored pencil artist. If you're using a colored surface, there the white color pencil does serve as a color. But even when I do use a colored surface, I still burnish with a white colored pencil. Now what I'm doing, without distinction to, to the, any of the parts, is I'm going over the entire part that I did here with the different colors with the white. It presses it into the different colors, it mixes it together, and over the over time, over the course of time of layering and burnishing on the work, it will bring out a lot of richness, and what you will begin to see is the translucent tones of the colored pencil will start becoming opaque which is really fun. That's another, another exciting thing about colored pencils, again, that takes away from the time to do it and really pulls me along, is to, the fact that you can take a simple pencil and build and build and, and add colors and layer and burnish, and it can become opaque colors and have such a, an impact that I really find that very exciting and it's 
it, what it really is, is it's one of the surprises of colored pencils. Uh, whenever I go to a show or do a demonstration, whenever people see colored pencils, they go, wow, that's colored pencils. And uh, it's not really so much what I'm doing. It's the surprise of colored pencils itself. You can do with a simple pencil you can build it to such a degree that it has quite a bit of impact in it. It's a wonderful surprise for such a humble and simple medium. That's what oh, I, I just enjoy that so much. So this is really the basic, I wouldn't call it a secret, but it's the heart and the technique behind colored pencils is simply this. Layering, 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 layering. And then layering more. And then taking the white colored pencil and going over them, burnishing them, mixing the colors together, blending them. The first time that I do that, you can see that the colors are mixed. It doesn't have quite an impact of color. But what you're going to see is when I go back over the colors that I just burnished, when I go back over it with more color, it's going to be much more vibrant and the color is going to start looking less transparent and more painterly. The wax builds up, the wax mixes together, and it just begins to have a real richness to the color. So I'm adding some poppy red on top of all the layers that I layered and burnished. I'm adding poppy red onto that, and it's coming out to be a lot more rich in color, a lot more thick looking, and it's beginning <clears throat> To look opaque because the grain of the paper is disappearing and the colors are all mixing together it ends up like paint but it has so many layers to it okay and I'll get out some uh, what do we have here want to pull out some more of the shading down here. Uh, normally when I do my art, I don't really go to the very dark shades right away. I'll add more layers around the picture, but in order to demonstrate what I'm doing, um, I'm going to be adding darker shading in here so I can show really how much color and the opaque effect of layering is going to reveal. So I'm adding dark umber here. Over top of all those layers. That is a, sh a shaded area. Light coming from the, the right here. The shaded areas on the left of the subject as we from where we're looking at it with our eyes. Blend in some dark umber here. All right. Okay, as I, I draw, whenever I draw with colored pencils, uh, I usually have a lot of colors in my hand and I end up dropping them on the floor and everything, but. I like to kind of have them uh, in hand so they're they're ready. Um, I'm going to add some more terracotta in this petal here, the shaded area, to give it some real uh, richness, a deeper color. So as you can see, we started out with 
very light colors. Let me see if I can uh, pull this up closer to the camera. The, the grain of the paper is starting to disappear and the layers are building, building up uh, to have a lot more color and shade to them. I do, whenever I do a subject, it helps my eye if I range around in different areas of the picture. So I'm going to work a little bit on uh, one of the leaves here. I initially put down a light layer before I started the demo of spring green. Now I'm putting on a layer of grass green. There are certain colors that you'll find have uh, they're not simple colors if you go outside well I guess you can't do it now because it's autumn but if you go outside in the summer and you find all kinds of trees and plants you're gonna find so many different shades and hues of green it's, it's really amazing so in particular for green whenever I do a colored pencil piece it takes a lot of mixing of colors to achieve the different kinds of green that my eye is picking up. I mix different shades of green. The, the good thing about Prismacolor colored pencils is not are they, only are they less expensive than, than other uh, colored pencils, but it has such a wide variety of colors. There's tons of them. And uh, I certainly, in a colored pencil piece, I use a lot of colors. Whatever my eye sees in there, I try to capture. The more hues and the more colors that I can capture, the more alive with vibrancy the picture is going to look to the eye, the more exciting to the eye it's going to be. So I had some spring green there to begin with. I have some grass green there. Let's see. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, some kelp green. Uh, the, the colors all have different fancy names to them. I, I guess they have to do that because if you have a million colors you got to call them something. It reminds me of a uh, cars they they have such fancy names <laughs> interest some of them are interesting kelp is an interesting color i guess to label something it's a, just a different shade of green i'm adding it in the darker area of the leaf In the interest of time, I'm going to pick up a little quicker here because I do want to demonstrate layering some color and burnishing with the leaf so you can see the effect of that as well. Okay. Let's see. So I added uh, those greens now on top of uh, the greens that I already added, I'm adding dark green. Color pencils is when you, when you discover what's behind it and you learn the basic technique of layering and burnishing, it's really not complicated. It's really, it's really a repetitive medium. There's re re repetition in the layering 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 that's the entire process of the colored pencils is layering on top of layers and then the burnishing that's where for me and for a lot of people uh, that, that take my classes and have experienced colored pencils discover how relaxing colored pencils can be because you already know going into doing the drawing that it's going to take some time. So you just kind of sit back and try to relax. 
chill and enjoy the drawing process, which is rather relaxing. God has blessed us with the gift of creativity and it really blesses our heart in a way which draws out a sense of peace and also a, a sense of accomplishment. When you discover how to use colored pencils and, and do it for yourself and discover what you can achieve and really you will be surprised by that. A lot of people say I can't draw. I can't even draw a stick figure. Well, really, uh, if you had a few classes or discovered just some basic, simple technique, you would be surprised at what you do. And you too can enjoy that wonderful feeling of the blessing of creativity. Certainly, um, for a art society, there are a lot of artists who are watching and each of you know that feeling of uh, what creativity does for the human heart. It's quite a blessing. So we're mixing dark green in there on top of all those layers. I want to get some more richness in here. So I think what I'm going to do is, uh, again, repetitively, I'm going to add some more kelp in here and I'm going to range wider on the picture here, deepen the color. Most of the time, my pencil lines follow the contours of the subject. Sometimes I'll do uh, different effects. We'll add some kelp green there. I'm trying to work a little fast here because I really wanted to show the effect of layering and burnishing with the leaf as well as the rose. The rose is such a, a small concentrated area of color. I want to I want to give something more for our eyes here to see. Okay. So I got some more kelp there. Now I'm going to take out my white colored pencil and I'm going to burnish the green as I do it. When I burnish, usually, not always, but usually I go against the grain or the strokes of the pencil strokes that I put down. It blends the color a lot better together. with the wax. The waxiness of the colored pencils blends a lot better by going against the grain. Again, this is uh, called burnishing. Over the course of an art piece, over the whole entire paper, I layer colors and burnish. That's entirely what color pencils is all about. It's just a matter of repeating the process over and over again. That's where the hours come in. Now, not everybody's gonna do that. Some people like a more loose style. Some people like to see grain in their paper and see the pencil strokes. Not everybody is gonna wanna have a, a deep painterly look to their pencils and that's fine with every medium out there we all know that there are different styles and colored pencils is certainly open to that as well as a matter of fact if you use a colored surface you can use a lot less layering and have a lot more pencil strokes there and it still will have quite a good effect because on a colored uh, surface since you already have a color down that's solid on the paper you really don't have to add uh, that much so I burnished here on top of all that green mixing the colors together let me 
bring it closer to the camera here. We started with rough pencil strokes and now they're mixed together with the burnishing. And then after burnishing them, I go over top of them with more color and that's really where it becomes more vibrant. I'm adding some more spring green here to give some vibrancy to the color of the leaf. Since it's such a light color, I'm not really following the contours of the leaf at the moment. Kind of going against the grain just to mix it in there. Add some uh, vibrancy in the leaf here. Then I'm going to add some uh, olive green. So many different shades of green. And you're going to find uh, when you apply green and use different colors, it's probably not going to look like whatever subject you have in front of you. Some of the greens kind of are very, well, especially grass green is so, such a harsh and stark color. Uh, I really add a lot of uh, different hues to that particular color in order to get it to look more realistic and have uh, more earth tones. That's that's another thing, even though my art has a lot of color to it, another thing that very much excites me is earth tones. Because it's just another form of the, uh, the uh, subtlety of art that I, I so much enjoy. So, we got some olive green in there in the shaded area. In order to bring out the dark area of the colored pencil I add the, the shadow is so dark that I add some black in there I have to work really quickly here I'm running out of time so I'll just block in the black there now again I'm layering I'm not putting down the full effect of the black I'm not putting down a very solid layer a black I'm putting down just a light layer I'll build the layers over top of each other in order to get the deepness of the color and then after I apply that I'll burnish it with the white colored pencil mix all the color in there press it into the paper bringing out the richness of the colored pencils and then, after I burnish, I go right on top of it with even more color. For instance, dark green. And each time that I put more color on top of a burnished layered surface, the color comes out much more opaque. That is the heart and soul of colored pencils. Adding some more black here. Okay. You can also... I use it periodically, but you can also use a colorless blender to burnish a colored pencil piece. I don't do that until I have a fair amount of layers on the picture. It's not very effective unless you have a lot of wax on the paper. But what that does is it blends, all it does is it blends the colors together and presses them into the paper grain. You lose a little bit of the uh, effect of the richness of the white, but I don't use the colorless blender for my sole source of blending. I only use it a couple of times. And I'll, I'll go right over that again with white anyway. It just gives it more of a, a painterly effect. Uh, the more layers I put on here, the more you can really feel the wax on there. I should mention that as well for a finished colored pencil piece. 
when it's fully completed and the entire picture is covered with color, I push my color pencils to the point where the grain of the paper will not receive any more pencil and not everyone will do that. Of course, it depends on a person's style, but that's what I do. And when there's that many layers of colored pencil on there, it gets something called wax bloom on the, uh, the color, the, the color pencils get a, a, a sheen, a white light sheen called wax bloom. I take that and buff it with a very soft cloth and bring, you know, it, it makes the, the wax bloom disappear. And then I spray it with a acrylic spray coating to keep the, uh, the wax bloom away, which really it should do outside because it's like a nuclear explosion to the sinuses. <laughs> if you've ever used it before, the, the Krylon acrylic spray coating is like a an explosion of, of uh, well, I don't know if it's toxic, but it's pretty strong. So there, we have the beginnings, the very beginning of a colored pencil piece. Starting simply with white surface. Starting simply with simple layers. Building them up on top of each other and gradually capturing our picture. Gradually building our subject one layer at a time. One process of layering and burnishing at a time. The layering and burnishing is something that I will do continually until the uh, piece is completed. Until the paper cannot take any more pencil. That's when I stop. It kind of goes together. It's not necessarily because uh, I feel like I have to use up all of the paper and cover all the little white grains of paper. It, the, the style of art that I do, the amount of colored pencil layering that I do, and the color, the uh, surface of the drawing surface, they, they go together to uh, basically tell me when to stop. The basics of technique of colored pencils, starting from very simple beginnings on a white surface, starting from simple tones, simple layers, and building them up as we go along. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad I got this opportunity to spend some time with you in video form. If you'd like to check out more of my work, you can find it at my website. I'll put the address right here. It'll also be attached with the uh, video on YouTube. If you'd, uh, I do have a book available that has uh, a great deal of my art in it. it it's mostly uh, the, the works in there with a few comments or uh, background behind the pieces. It's called Peace and Beauty, a selection of the art of Jeffrey M. Green. That's available on Amazon. I uh, only have two of those in stock at the moment, but you can get those at any time on Amazon. What I uh, did uh, actually, for my teaching, for my classes, I, I wanted to make a booklet that people could take home and have a, a handy reference for. So I, I made a booklet about colored pencils. It basically goes over all the details that I do in my class. It's in text form. It's a handy uh, take-home thing that you can have to uh, refer to. Whenever you have questions or if you just want to learn about colored pencils, I have those available too. I'll leave that link on the YouTube thing there. They're only about $4. Uh, I can't remember exactly how much the uh, 
books are somewhere around $20. But again, thank you so much for joining me. I enjoyed, creativity is so wonderful, isn't it? I enjoyed the time with you. Thank you.